Hey guys, and welcome back to the Sex Advent Calendar, 25 days of sex education all through the month of December. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about intersex conditions. And there are a lot of really good introductory videos out there on YouTube already, and I don't wanna beat a dead horse. So I'm gonna include some links below for a general introduction to the idea of intersex identities. And those videos are really good at talking about the differentiation between sex and gender and making sure that you understand sort of the building blocks of what we're talking about here. But I wanted to be able to go into a slightly deeper dive. So this video is gonna talk about some of the more common intersex conditions that exist. And they're kind of divided into two primary categories. One is chromosomal disorders and one is hormone disorders. In our traditional conceptions of biology, a fertilized egg has two chromosomes that are sex chromosomes, one from each parent. But sometimes spontaneous problems with the merging of the gametes or in the division of cells early on in a pregnancy can lead to issues like monosomy, which is when cells only have one sex chromosome in them, or uh, mosaicism, in which some cells have two chromosomes, some cells only have one, some have three, and trisomy, in which all the cells have three sex chromosomes. So. So one example of a chromosomal disorder, the most common one, in fact, is Klinefelter syndrome. Klinefelter syndrome is a form of trisomy where people have an XXY chromosome for their sex chromosomes. These people are generally born with a penis and a prostate, but they also have testosterone deficiency, small atrophied testes, and usually experience delayed puberty, sometimes infertility, low libido, and occasionally develop more breast tissue than would be traditional for a person with X. Y chromosome. So, um, most of the time it's treated with testosterone very effectively to deal with the libido issues and can sometimes help with fertility issues as well. Turner syndrome is another kind of chromosomal disorder and this is a kind of monosomy usually, although sometimes it can be a form of mosaicism. The most common way of representing Turner syndrome is XO. So that's where there is no second sex chromosome in a cell. People with Turner syndrome will develop feminine characteristics, but will usually have short stature and much slower growth than their peers. They'll often have a lot of problems with fertility, including amenorrhea, which is where you just don't get your period at all. Some folks will lack the formation of ovaries or an internal reproductive tract, and others will have a small uterus or a very short vagina that has to do with the role that um, a lack of of higher doses of estrogen would lead to the effective formation of. Um, people with Turner syndrome, about 30 to 40% of them also develop a congenital heart disease issue. And so this is one of those chromosomal disorders that you wanna keep a pretty close eye on as people grow up. The last chromosomal disorder that I wanna talk about is Jacob syndrome and trisomy X. So those are two sides of the same coin, essentially. Jacob syndrome is where you would have an XYY chromosomal type, and trisomy X is where you have an XXX chromosomal type. Um, for people with Jacobs syndrome, there's minimal differentiation from people with a traditional XY chromosome, so that extra Y doesn't really do a whole lot, except it can make people a little bit taller, and sometimes it's associated with learning difficulties. Trisomy X has some of the same issues, where people with three X chromosomes will be taller than their peers who only have two X chromosomes, and are also likely to have learning dif difficulties. Um, these two Chromosomal disorders are very rarely diagnosed because there are so few differentiating factors from people with standard du dual sex chromosomes, um, and they don't pose a lot of health risks. Now the flip side of this is talking about hormonal disorders. And these are people who have an XX or an XY chromosome, but who have differentiation in the way that their body processes those hormones like testosterone and estrogen. So the most common one that people have heard of is congenital adrenal hyperplasia, sometimes called CAH. It occurs in about 1 in 13,000 births, and it's generally an inherited genetic disorder that affects the adrenal glands that produce cortisol and aldosterone. So people born with CH, CAH usually have two X chromosomes, but this excessive production of aldosterone can lead to a fused labia that looks more like a scrotum and a larger clitoris. These people usually have early onset puberty, and the classic form of CAH does have some more serious health complications. 
The sort of inverse of CAH is testosterone biosynthetic defects, which also occur in about 1 in 13,000 births. So this occurs with people who have an XY chromosome type, um, but who have trouble converting cholesterol to testosterone, which of course is the sex hormone that helps develop the testes and the penis. So generally, testes are present in the abdomen of people with testosterone biosynthetic defects, but they don't ever descend. And depending on how completely the body fails to convert testosterone, the genitalia on the outside can look ambiguous, or more usually, the labia, a labia and clitoris will develop. And the last piece of this is androgen insensitivity syndrome. So this also affects people with an XY chromosome, and it's kind of similar to testosterone biosynthetic defects. But instead of the body not producing and converting testosterone, the body produces enough testosterone, but the receptors in the body aren't able to react to it. So we have similar issues with the development of the reproductive tract, um, but it's not because the hormone isn't there, it's just because the body doesn't really know what to do with it. So this is really just scratching the surface of what some of the intersex disorders are out there. And there's a lot more conversation that we can be having on the social side as well as on the medical side of how to better serve the intersex community. I hope you will tune in for more videos throughout the month and let me know other topics that you want me to cover in the future.